By the way, if you see a little ad advertisement at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end of the video, please do not skip it. By doing that, you're helping me a lot. Come on, guys. It's just a few seconds of your life, and it will really make a difference for me. I'm counting on all of you. Enjoy the interview. Uh -huh. All right. Um, this is this new album is called Obituary. It's a self-titled one, right? And how we how would you compare this new album to the previous ones? Well, it's it's classic obituary sound as far as you know the style and music and writing. You know, if you're a obituary fan, you're gonna love it. So, but uh, no, I think it's a great album it's from front to back. I mean, every song has got a nice hook to it, and like I said again, classic obituary, like heavy as can be, as, as usual. And uh, but uh, no. I think uh, it stands right up there with our first few albums, to be honest, as far as being like a classic record for obituary. Mm -hmm. All right. And why is it called just obituary? It took like 10 albums to do that. Um, it's kind of funny because we um, we had this piece of artwork at the cover from, uh, I guess, during the Ink and Blood sessions. When we were recording that album, we were having our artist do some artwork, and he painted that. He's our work at that time, as, at the same time as the Into Blood cover, which we were thinking maybe to use in the future, probably for a DVD or something. We didn't know. It was just a piece of artwork anyway. So when we were doing production for the new album uh, last year, we were like, what are we going to use for artwork? We had some ideas. And then we looked at that thing and we were like, why don't we use this piece of artwork? You know, it's there. It's already done. It's killer looking. It's basic. It's simple. And it took to top what we did on Ink and Blood for artwork is going to be pretty hard to do at this point. So we were like, let's just use this piece of art. And then we, so we all agreed on that. And then we, we decided, you know, after we were finished recording, we were like, well, we didn't know the name of the album yet. But what are we going to call the album? So we went back and forth again. And we were just like, why don't we just call it, look at the album cover, it's just our logo. Why don't we just call the album Obituary? You know, for the first mm -hmm. time. You know, we never did it. So yeah. that was mainly how it happened. You know, just kind of by accident. It wasn't like a pre planned thing to self title, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, musically, Obituary is a band that plays a, a kind of a slow death metal compared to to, to other peers. Uh, would you say that the band's style is more influenced on Black Sabbath and Sludge Metal instead instead of Possessed and Slayer? Well, a little bit of all. I mean, because Slayer and Possessed and Sacrifice and Metallica, Old Metallica, I mean, all those old bands, Exodus, were huge influence on obituary, big time in general. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was Kevin Frost and Hellhammer and Black Sabbath and stuff like that. Um, uh, when, we make, when we make our music, I think just the heavier stuff stands out big time because not many people do the slow, doomy, heavy stuff in death metal as much as we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do a lot of mid space and we do fast stuff too. I mean, it just seems like that middle and then slow, doomy thing really sounds huge in a room, you know? <laughs> we kind of, but as far as influences, I mean, all those bands were influenced on all of us. I mean, mm -hmm. anything um, from the heavy stuff, maybe Hell, Ham Hell Hammer is probably the big influence of, of it all. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what do you think about deathcore bands? Do do you like them? Because they are kind of like influence a lot of in a lot influence a lot in, in in death metal, but they play super fast. Right. You know, so that sounds good. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's kind of hooky catch riffs, like hardcore stuff, all the beat breakdowns and stuff, which. Obviously, Richard does that kind of stuff too, in a way. You know, we do these breakdown things, and in fact, a lot of hardcore and deathcore people who like that music always like obituary because of that style. But I mean, yeah, it's cool. It's cool stuff. Huh? All right. Um, have you ever listened to Mr. Bangles' demos from from the 80s? The demo? I remember some of their re recordings. I don't remember what they were demos, but they were albums. You know, Mr. Bungle. Yeah, I don't know. Why was it uh, heavy? 
uh, the the first the first two demos they are really really they really sound like uh, early death metal very similar to possessed have you ever listened to those uh, demos <laughs> Cool. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I assume that you know that Mr. Bangle, you know Mike Patton's band, is uh, the three albums that they release are very far uh, very far from what death metal is about. But uh, like I said, they are yeah they are uh, first two demos. I don't remember the the names, but they sound really really raw and really really like you know, old school death metal. But, but they change a lot so. I just wanted to know the, the, your opinion on those on those two demos, but uh, suddenly you didn't get the chance have to, to check it out. Yeah, do it, please. I'll have to see if I can find it. <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, what's your best memory uh, from bassist Frank uh, Watkins? Uh, Frank Watkins. Oh, my best memory. Yeah. Forgot his name. The the guy from from Massacre. Uh, Terry yeah, Terry Butler. Terry Butler here. Thank you so much. Uh, how how is to work with with Terry? Oh, it's amazing. He's a uh, you know I've I've been friends with Terry for probably thirty eight, thirty eight, five, thirty six years, something wow. crazy. I, I've known him since I was a teenager or a young kid. I'm, in fact, uh, it's funny since he's been in a band because he played in death, you know, but during yeah. the time when we found Frank Watkins, it was like, I wonder why we didn't have Terry, but he was busy. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, no, he's a great, great bass player and a uh, cool dude. And like the, he's like a family to us, so we've been just like best friends with him and his family for years. All right. right. Mm -hmm. and, I have a family in the band. So. I agree. That's cool. And how how was to work with James Murphy on the Cause of Death album? Uh, you know, it's funny. Mainly, he just he did reads on that. I mean, obviously, when he came into the band, we were already we finished recording almost uh, Cause of Death album minus some solos. And uh, so he came in, you know, and did his thing. But no, he uh, he's a great guitar player. Um, obviously, some of the best leads on any obituary album on uh, Call of Death Rider is pretty sick. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, so so he actually recorded only the solos on Cause of Death? Yeah, all the rhythm tracks and stuff were already finished. I did, did two different tracks on that myself. But yeah, oh. everything was done. I think even the vocals might have been done when he came in. Because he was in Death, and he left Death in the middle of... Uh, after their last tour together. yeah, and yeah. Uh, we were in the studio already because Alan left the band Alan West and um, we didn't have a solo player to do all the main leads I mean I can do some but it was like you know as far as shredding dude that's all he does is, and uh, Murphy knew we were looking for somebody so he gave us a call actually Scott Burns I think gave him my phone number and then he called me mm -hmm. uh, he went, come on down to talk about it and so he ended up just coming in throwing leads down kind of on the fly you know He'd sit in the room and jam music for a while, listen to it, and then try to come up with some ideas, you know, for his leads. All right. Uh, the band is almost 30 years old. Uh, which are your plans for the future? Uh, well, right now we're touring like crazy. Obviously, we're coming to South America here soon. Uh, we just did some U.S. runs, and we're going to be doing a European run next year in March, probably Pacific. Uh, rim tour as far as like Australia and Japan and stuff, maybe uh, possibly in February next year. Um, basically, right now we're just a lot of touring. Uh, we've got a, a, a video we're working on our production, like another song off the, new, off the newer album, so that should be coming out hopefully soon. Uh, should be finished by now. I'm not sure what the deal is, but, but right now it's just touring a lot. All right. All, always, all, we're, all, we're always creating music though, like as far as writing. I mean, like. Just recently on our U.S. tour, I came up with some ideas by accident, so that's always happening. <laughs> Today, yes, 
yesterday and in the future. Mm-hmm. All right. Creating, creating music. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you. That's it. Thank you so much for your time, ter- Trevor. If you like this interview, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share the video with all your friends. Also, very important, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.